All right. In this video, I want to talk about the rapture. I got some stuff up here to show that it looks like it can be really soon, within the next few months. And I'm going to get into that, but before I do, I wanted to explain what I have here. Uh, the GIF is from a Marvel movie, Spider-Man 3, I think it is. And this is Sandman, when he actually becomes the Sandman. And I thought this is a good GIF. It's kind of like what happens with the Marvel characters in the Infinity Wars that they had going on with Thanos. And he snaps his finger and half the world turns into dust. Half the of the people of the world turns into dust. And I was thinking about that because the Bible tells us that man is made of the dust of the earth and dust we are and dust will show shall return and I was thinking you know what I think there's something something to this about how the rapture is going to be because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God so we're going to have to shed our mortal bodies and I was kind of wondering what that's going to be like right if our bodies just drop dead what happens and I was like, well, maybe maybe there's something like this. From dust we are, and dust will return. And maybe that's what we're going to see happen, is our body turn to dust. It just kind of go away, and that's what people are going to see. And what are they going to think of? They're going to think of the Marvel movies, where Thanos, he's the evil bad guy, an alien who destroyed half of the world. And he did this to save everybody because there's too many people and isn't that one of the things that is talked about in the government and media is overpopulation too many people so they're trying to get you to be okay with something like this and that what actually is happening is the people are raptured and they shed their flesh and blood and they are given a glorified body they get one flesh with Jesus. And the people are going to say it has something to do with aliens because they already did a pre-programming there with the, the movies that a lot of people saw. Where everybody turning to dust. And everybody's worried about it. And, you know, they done it with other... Movies and TV shows like Left Behind and all this other stuff. So they already got it in your mind. And they're just trying to redirect your mind away from God, away from the Bible, away from Jesus and your salvation and where you're going to end up when you die. They want you focused on something else. So they're going to bring up something like aliens. And if you see something like this happen, somebody just vaporizes in the dust and and or you know their blood just falls onto the ground because flesh and blood do not inherit the kingdom of God then know that that's the work of God he took our souls up but he he cares nothing about our our flesh and blood that's that's full of sin it's corrupt we don't even want it anymore, and he finally frees us from it. Uh, but anyway, about this event happening, uh, another reason why I brought up this picture is uh, I was listening to Gene Kim. He's a preacher on YouTube. I think his channel is True Bible Believers. I think that's what it is. You know, I'm not... Uh, 100% aligned with the fella, but for the most part I am. And he was saying something about, you know, flesh and blood not inheriting the earth. But he also said something about, you know, the flesh being dust. And that's what triggered me. I was like, yeah, you know, you see that in the movies and what have you of half the world just kind of vaporizing. And I was like, maybe... Maybe that's how the rapture is going to be. I don't know. You know. What if this is what happened to Enoch when he was translated? 
right? He was taken up and something happened. And you have something similar with Elijah. He's taken up in a whirlwind, something kind of like what you're seeing here. And maybe, you know, the flesh turned into dust and his soul is freed and then given a new glorified body. Something like that happening. You know, mostly speculation and just taking the puzzle pieces I have and trying to put them together to make a picture. But, you know, nothing exactly definitive and concrete, you know. But anyway, let, let's get into this. Um, I guess I'll start with this, actually. I like listening to this guy now, and then he gets some good music and a silly sense of humor. And he's always talking about the rapture and when it can be and reasons why. And So I listen to this guy. He's got a minute. Uh, unique guy. He's kind of like this guy, Dr. Barry Aw. Yeah, you know, silly sense of humor, kind of quirky. but really smart and figuring things out, uh, I suggest you listen to this guy too, Dr. Barry Aw. If you're, you know, looking into the rapture and when it can be, you know, no one's setting dates. We're just looking and watching, hoping, hey, maybe he's going to do it now. You know, maybe tomorrow, right? Maybe, maybe right now in this video, right? Or hopefully right when I upload it and then I can get out of here, right? That'd be perfect timing. But, uh, anyway, this video here, uh, very interesting because there was another fella, I think his name is Repo Man 64 I think that's who it was. He was talking about something going on on March 16th. I wasn't quite sure what he was getting at, but, you know, I remember what he said, March 16th. And then uh, this guy got him and it saw this guy's video, Ken, Ken Potter, and I checked out his stuff. And I'm not in agreement with a lot of where this guy stands. He seems like a very smart guy, but he seems like he's too smart where he thinks he's going to decide what is and isn't the word of God. Kind of a side subject there, but uh, that's just my, my two cents on that. Uh, i am got my complete faith in the King James Version, but again, side topic there. But anyway... Uh, so listening to what the repo man was saying there, you know, just hearing him out, he, he, he's looking for the rapture too, and says some interesting things. And like I said, I'm just listening to people and taking these little pieces of the puzzle that they're either finding or they're speculating about. And I'm taking them and doing the same thing, trying to put the puzzle together and figure things out. And, uh, in this guy's video, he shows how they looked in the Torah. That's the first five books of your Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And they were showing in the Hebrew how uh, in the middle of the Torah, I think it's Leviticus, they could find, when they skip the letters, they'll find Yahweh. And then on either side in the other books, they find Torah, in Genesis and Exodus pointing to Yahweh, and then in reverse, in Numbers and Deuteronomy, Torah in reverse pointing to Yahweh. And he was saying, yeah, another interesting thing is that uh, you even look at Israel. And he says, if you look at Israel and how uh, the languages are going to the west and to the east, that they developed in a way that to the east, they were all uh, left left to right. Or should I say the, the opposite? They wrote right to left. And that's how they write and read. And then to the west of Israel, you have, again, pointing to Israel, the people read from left to right. And I was like, that's very interesting. You know, it all points to Israel points to Yahweh, points to God. I was like, these little things. So this, that's what the guy was using to get you to pay attention to symmetry. Because God uses symmetry and he uses these things to point to something. And this year, it point, points to uh, 516. Which is interesting because I thought it was March. So we got January, February, March. That's third. And April, May. 
Oh, maybe I mixed up March and May. It's May 16th. Okay, you know, forgive me if I mix that up. Uh, so anyway, uh, May 16th, not March 16th. Uh, some interesting stuff here is that this is the centerpiece. And I know on the sides here, it doesn't match up on the Gregorian calendar. For example, at this point here, it says 928, 2015. And then over here, it says 1231, 2028, right? And you're like, those dates don't match up. Well, on the uh, Jewish calendar, the lunar calendar, they match up on the exact dates for that calendar. So this date here, in 2015 is the same date over here in 2028 on the Jewish lunar calendar. All right? So that's why it's a symmetry going on here. On the Gregorian calendar, th these dates are just to show you because we use the Gregorian calendar. That's how we're able to see this. If we put this on the Jewish calendar, we wouldn't know really what we're looking at. Right? It, it would almost be like a foreign language. But putting this overlap, we're able to see this and figure it out. So we see that it's pointing to this date on our calendar, right? Very interesting uh, turn of events here, but I'm not too sure what to think of it. Uh, it is a definitely a watch date, but the other things I wanted to add into it was here. I was shown this, that Purim, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It's a holiday that the Jews have celebrating when the Jewish people ended up being freed from Haman's plot to kill them all and annihilate all the Jews. They were free from that. And the people who wanted to do it were hung. So, you know, interesting stuff, right? Uh, well, this date is on, ooh, I missed this up, uh, it actually tells us March 16th. So I thought it lined up with this, so I thought that was interesting, but apparently I got that mixed up. So now this video doesn't really sync together at all. You see, I thought this was March 16th, 316, 2022, and it lined up with Purim, which is a sign of Israel being delivered from a plot to kill them all, which is basically what's going to be going on through the seven-year tribulation, right? So I thought there was a connection there. But turns out I, I, I jacked this up, so that's my bad. But maybe there's still something to it, because I was, you know, thinking about all this, and I was like, when is the uh, new year for the Jews? Because that's when they're going to be... What, 74? Because right now they're still considered 73 years old until the new year. And the new Jewish year doesn't start until what looks like April 1st. I know it says here April 2nd, 3rd, but I'm going to explain why I say April 1st, April Fool's Day. And that's because it says here, Abib, 14th, Passover. And they make it the same day as Unleavened Bread, and they call it a High Sabbath, right? And then the 15th is the wave sheaf offering. But that's not true. The 14th is the Passover. The next day is the first day of unleavened bread. Then the 16th would be the wave offering. That's what we read from... Uh, the Torah. That it's three separate days. Uh, Passover and unleavened bread are not the same day, even though on Passover you do eat unleavened bread. Uh, but anyway, uh, I thought that was interesting that it would it would start on April Fool's Day, because I was like maybe this is when stuff is going to happen. It's the Fool's Day. This is when Satan gets controls on April Fool's Day. That's when he's going to be setting up his. Uh, his rule setting up uh, the maybe the seven year covenant, right? Maybe this is when things kick off. It's Satan's day, Fool's day. How's that makes some sense? And that's going to be right when uh, the year ends, 
for everything to fit, like people were saying, that uh, the 80 year fig tree prophecy, uh, that that 80 years is going to be about the year 2028, 2029. So there would have to be a seven year tribulation before then because they were going to see all those events of the tribulation. So we would have to be gone by 2022 for the dispensation to go from the church back to Israel. And it could be this spring. And I think that would be hilarious if if it's by or before April Fool's Day. Uh, but that was assuming what I saw here was actually March 16th. But who knows, maybe it can still attach to Purim 2022. Maybe this does have something to do with uh, what's going on. Maybe I mixed up March and May for a reason so that I would stumble upon this. Uh, I don't know. But another reason why it would be April Fool's Day is because Rosh Hashanah, Hashanah, don't know why I can't say that, is the Jewish New Year, which actually is in Tishri. Uh, But a lot of people say that the New Year is Abib, and the Bible does say, you know, Aviv or Abib. Uh, But uh, like we see here, Abib, some people put Aviv, like Tel Aviv, as the first month. But I think this is the first month before the covenant with Israel. And this was considered to be the first month for them. I don't know why. I'm not, you know, something to look into if you're interested. But uh, interesting stuff. It's interesting stuff. And... Yeah, that's about all I really wanted to get into. You know, just put my two cents out there. Maybe I say something that clicks something with some of these other people. And they they put their God-given genius together and they figure it out. And they tell me what's what. But anyway, thanks for watching and take care.